Hello everyone, and I hope everybody is doing perfectly fine. So today we'll be discussing another rare case, and I'll tell you how to approach, like how we approached uh, to this case, starting from clinical diagnosis to biopsy. So this case is about stroma ovary, which was present in a pediatric patient. So to begin with the case history, it was a case of 12-year-old female patient who presented with chief complaints of pain abdomen and vomiting, and this was for the last five days. There was no history of any major illness or chronic illness or history of tuberculosis in the past. So the patient had attained menarche one year back. Her routine hematological parameters were within normal limits. Only slight elevation was noted in levels of T3 and T4, normal TSH levels were seen. Rest of the uh, parameter, biochemical parameters, that is LFT, KFT, lipid profile, blood sugars, these were all within normal reference range. However, her ultrasound was done view of pain abdomen. It revealed a right-sided ovarian, so solid cystic ovarian mass, which measured 4.2 into 6 centimeter. And there was mild abdominal distension with no pelvic mass or any sign of ascites. This was seen on physical examination. However, ultrasound showed a right solid cystic mass, which was measuring 4 into 6 centimeter. Her urinary tract, uh, urine pregnancy test was negative. The serum marker, tumor markers like CA125, CEA, NCG, these were all within the normal reference range. So on based uh, on the clinical history and radiological finding, a diagnosis of twisted ovarian cyst was made and the patient was advised for surgical intervention. MRI whole abdomen was done and it revealed large heterogeneous signal intensity lesion with fat signal and fluid signal intensity with free fluid level or any hemorrhagic foci in the pouch of Douglas. And this mass was inseparable from right ovary. So this gives you a clue that the origin of the mass is from ovary. So this was likely a right dermoid ovarian cyst with mild ascites. So this was based on the radiological finding, the MRI finding. So I'll tell you. See, this is the mass. Here, the solid cystic mass we can see here, which is involving the right-sided ovary. So exploratory laparotomy was done by the pan and steel incision, and this on surgical removal, there was it was noted that a multi-loculated complex right ovarian cyst left the ovary, uterus, and the rest of the abdomen. It was they appeared free from the disease. Right ovarian cystectomy was performed, and post-operative the patient was well settled and uh, the patient was discharged on day four of surgery and the, after the surgery the histopathological uh, examination was done the cells the ovarian cystectomy specimen was sent to pathology department grossly we received a mass labeled as right ovarian cyst which measured five into five into two centimeter approximate area external surface were high, slightly asymmetrical with gray white glistening areas Gray white cartilage, focal cartilage areas were also seen. Few cystic space were also noted, which was filled with a mucoid material, and some will some were filled with a pultaceous material. And on serial sectioning, we noted single tooth also, which was found embedded in the wall of the cyst. So see the gross specimen. So this was the external surface, it's smooth, glistening, gray white external surface is seen, and this is the cut section. You cut like a you open like a book when we give a cut section. So what you are seeing here and see this is the tooth which was seen on serial sectioning. So some cystic area, solid area, gray white area, so focal solid areas, tooth was removed. So multiple sections were taken from different different area and section when we examined under microscope what we found was a partly encapsulated lesion, extensive area comprising of benign thyroid follicles. You would see like this, we are giving section from thyroid tissue. So thyroid follicles were seen arranged in small groups, micro follicles and macro follicles, luminal colloid B3. Intervening area, it showed fibroglobulin septa with delicate vessels. So this is the microscopic picture. You are seeing through the sheets, may you are seeing thyroid follicular cell. This is the high bar image. So a follicle here. This is a thyroid follicle which is lined by benign thyroid follicular epithelial cell, single lined. Or jo ye lumen hai, isme hai hamare colloid. So you are seeing a cyst, pura replacement of the ovarian so normal parenchyma with these thyroid follicles. 
सो अदर एरिया से भी हमने लिए सेक्शन वहां पर हमें अपार्ट फ्रॉम द थाइड फॉलिकल विच वॉज आई थिंक कम्प्राइजिंग मोर देन एटी फाइव टू नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द एरिया वॉज कम्प्राइज विद दिस थाइड फॉलिकल एंडियल सेल्स and some sections showed uh, evidence of ruptured epidermal cysts cysts of sebaceous glands squamous areas cartilaginous areas focal stroma ovarian stroma also which was lined by respiratory epithelium however we did not find any neural tissue q neural tissue root na important hota hai because see if you get neural tissue to wo immature teratoma ki taraf jata hai so the prognosis becomes little bad so see this is the section you are seeing here यहाँ पे है ओवेरियन स्ट्रोमा विच इज लाइन बाय रेस्पिरेटरी एपिथेलियम एंड सराउंडेड बाय यू कैन सी थायरॉइड फॉलिकुलर सेल्स देन यहाँ पे आप देख रहे हो सिबेशियस ग्लैंड्स सराउंडिंग में यहाँ सो दिया रेस्पिरेटरी एपिथेलियम है ऊपर है एंड देन अंडरनीथ यू आर सीइंग थायरॉइड फॉलिकुलर सेल्स हियर यू आर सीइंग अ एपिडर्मल सेल्स फॉर्मस लाइन एपिथेलियम है बीच में केरा केराटिन फ्लेक्स आ रहे हैं सो अ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टिश्यू वी आर गेटिंग सो वी आर पॉइंटिंग टुवर्ड्स टेराटोमा But thyroid follicular cells बहुत ज्यादा है so we give a diagnosis of struma ovale. So based on the clinical, radiological and detailed histopathological evaluation, diagnosis of struma ovale that is mature ovarian teratoma. Neural epithelium नहीं थे तो it is not immature. So it is coming under mature ovarian teratoma. Post surgery thyroid follicle was found to be within normal reference range. One year follow-up we did for the patient. Ultrasound pe thyroid profile was normal. Ultrasound did not show any further damage to any structure. CA125 was normal within. The react we the the tumor marker was done at regular interval and was found to be within normal range. So now the diagnosis was stroma ovarian. So teratoma kya hota hai ki different epithelial cells aate hain. Okay, different uh, sorry ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm ke cells you will see in teratoma. So we got everything in this slides. Sorry. So, just to recapitulate about something about stroma ovary and some from book and something from literature I have taken. Stroma ovary, or you call it as monodermal teratoma, it is very rare and specialized ovarian tumor. And you know, teratoma is a tumor of germ cell origin and contains more than one germ cell layer structure. So, based on the cellular component, it is divided into mature, immature, and monodermal variants. So, the two forms of monodermal variants are coming to our mind. Mature or old, so this is under stroma ovary or carcinoid. If it comes, that comes under monodermal variant. So this stroma ovary, it is dominant growth of thyroid tissue. We have found 85 to 90 percent of area was covered by thyroid tissue. Fifth, normally, we have 50 percent mass is more covered by the tumor. So that way, you can label it as stroma ovary. First time this entity was discovered in 1889 by Boitlin, who happened to see presence of thyroid tissue in ovaries, and subsequently few cases was reported by von Kalden. So in 1895. got shock in 1899 mayer in 1903 so they reported similar cases this stroma ovary comprises less than 1% of total ovarian tumors and there is actually limited data what we see in literature and ovarian teratoma as they come those may 5% and this data is also supported by few studies in literature by you sc et al hedri ajz et al then gatti magadi et al so they also reported cases of stroma ovary So usually, when you see it, you see it at the age of 40 year and peak in approximately around fifth, fifth decade of life. Few cases have been reported pre-pubertal and post-menopausal. It is extreme of age also you have seen. So in Gatti Magar, what he reported was total seven cases is reported. Three were seen in more than 40 years of age group. Three cases were seen in 30 to 40. One was seen in 26 year old. Khedri et al reported three cases of SO in 17 years, 31 and 40 years respectively. Our case is much rare in the fact that our patient was 12 year old female. So majority they will present with non-specific symptom only. Just routine diagnosis के लिए आते हैं, ultrasound भी detect होते हैं. So non-specific symptom क्या लिखा है ना patient? Pain abdomen है, palpable abdominal mass, vaginal bleeding, ascites, hydrothorax, then thyroid hormones के level altered होंगे. So 8 percent of uh, stroma ovary patient they have simultaneous presence of hyperthyroidism also, which was noted in our patient. So T3, T4 levels were elevated in our patient. So in a study by Kaur et al, this stroma ovary was noted with pre-operative high levels of T3, similar to our case. Radiological evaluation is very important in classification of ovarian tumor. But definitive diagnosis जो देंगे हम वो tissues से देते हैं and that is histopathological evaluation. So differential diagnosis radiopaint is difficult कि वो dermoid cyst है, benign cyst है, endometrioma है, malignancy है. So in stroma ovary MRI will show you multilocular cyst. With variable signal intensity, but no definitive opinion can be said on basis of MRI. 
So usually stuma ovary appears as unilateral sided mass. Right ovary being affected more. Bilateral bhi hota hai, rare hota hai, just 6% of cases. So Rana B et al had reported a case of bilateral stuma ovary. Elderly patient mein kiya tha. And she also had pseudo mix syndrome. Khedri et al also found occurrence of stuma ovary in right ovary. And Ghati Magar also, uh, he noted all four cases in left ovary. So majority gross wise, if we the range size range is 0.5 to 10 cm. Grossly cystic mass ki hota hai, brown gelatinous material with some solid areas. Microscopically, it consists of predominantly normal looking microplastic thyroid uh, follicles. Honge. Other areas we will get, which we got, sebaceous glands, squamous epithelium, malignant form of stroma ovary is very rare and it is noted in 5 to 10 percent of cases. Evidence we get is papillary follicular mixed. Treatment is surgical excision. Resection of the uh, ovarian mass, especially in younger women. In case of the malignancy hai, ya recurrence, hai, toh, other factors to be considered karte hai, like tumor, presence of ascites, adhesions during surgery, etc. So in present case, surgical excision of the involved right ovary was done considering the pediatric age group of patient. So post-surgery, her thyroid levels were within normal range. Our patient mein recurrence was not noted. We followed the patient for one year. So to conclude, stroma ovary, it's a rare ovarian tumor with majority behaving in a benign fashion. Radiology can give you an impression, differentiate kar sakta hai between various cystic lesion, like, but definitive diagnosis nahi de sakte. So this case highlights the example of this detailed gross and microscopic examination in giving an accurate diagnosis. So it's a wholesome approach, combined clinical, radiological and pathological diagnosis. So in the index case, our case also suggests the fact that stroma ovary can be noted in very young age. It is pediatric female patient. This R case, it reiterates the importance of integrative approach, I said. It, and this helps in early diagnosis and early management of the rare gene. So these are my few references. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Kindly like, subscribe and share my channel. Thank you so much.